All right, folks, welcome back to Top Comics Pressing. This is going to be a send-off video. So right here we have our next comics going to CGC for their modern grading. I just wanted to walk you through the pre-screen and uh, let you know what I think is going to happen with them. So the first one here is a copy of Uncanny X-Men number 266, which needs no introduction as the first full appearance of Gambit. Um, and this comic book came to me as an incredibly generous gesture from a client who is super happy at the Bumsky their book got. And so they sent it to me as a thank you, which was pretty awesome. Uh, I told them I would be happy to crack it, press it, and see what comes of it. And so this one is uh, really to complete that gesture. Um, it was originally CGC 8.5. I think that was pretty fair because it actually did have uh, a good amount of edge wear along here. Uh, and you can see that there's still a little bit of a tear. Now I did actually press this and iron it and then I repressed it and it looks pretty good. I think I got most of the evidence of that damage out. We'll see if uh, I get it fully past CGC or not. Uh, if so, you know, maybe we'd be looking at a, a book in the mid nines. It's definitely not going to be a nine eight, but uh, it does look really nice, and hopefully, it'll break that nine point oh barrier. All right, next one up here is an Omega Man number three. This is a book that I uh, actually had never owned before, and I was scrolling through, uh, you know, w one of the places online where I buy comics, my comic shop, um, and this one came was graded a six zero, and I was looking at all the scans, and I didn't see anything that I thought was, you know, critical to lower it to that range. There's a little bit of color rub right up in here, and there is some corner damage here. So this book's not going to be a nine eight. But I thought based on the pictures that it would be improvable and that the 6.0 might be a little bit uh, of a harsh grade as it was, um, particularly if it hadn't been pressed raw. And so we'll see what it'll come out at. I'm thinking 8.5 with that corner ding, uh, I think is the primary, primary damage. So you can see that there's a little bit corner wear kind of down there as well. No major creases though, nothing really catastrophic, just a lot of of kind of mediocre, mediocre damage. Um, right here is a copy of the Eternals number one. This comic also I got from my comic shop. I could not find the slip. I think it was either graded a seven or a seven five. Uh, it does have a back corner crease that was very, very light. And so I'm hoping after a press and an iron that that might go unnoticed. It very, very, very faintly broke the gloss, but very, very minor. Um, you can see here that this one is horribly miswrapped though. Uh, th this is actually back cover art rolled onto the front, but it is not a spine roll. You'll notice that the staples are pointed out sideways. It is a miswrap, and so there's nothing to do about it other than to send it on in. Uh, I think it was graded a seven or a seven five, and I'm hoping it'll come back. Um, it if they nail that back corner crease, it'll be an eight five. If not, hopefully it'll be like a nine two or a nine four. Um, by the way, for those of you that are big speckers, this book has absolutely tanked in value. I was able to pick this up for a very low price. So I was excited about that. Um, this copy of New Teen Titans Annual number two was a previous CGC 9.2. I thought this grade was an absolute joke for this book. I have no idea why it was a nine two. It did not have greater notes. To me, this book looked like it should have been a nine six, nine eight. It does have a nasty binding tear, but that should not affect the grade below 9.6. And especially for annuals that are double fat, they tend to be a little bit more forgiving with those. So we're going to send it back and see if CGC is just making me pay twice for the grade I should have got the first time. Um, you know, we'll see how it comes out. Amazing Spider-Man number 252, a comic that needs absolutely no introduction. Um, this was another one where it does have some defects, but I thought the grade, when I was looking at it, didn't quite match the scans. And if you're curious how I do that, I mean, you have to go and look at the extra large image and then be quite skeptical and quite critical. Um, so I did pick this one up again at my comic shop at a... Uh, 4.5 grade. I think this thing's actually going to come in closer to a 7. Um, you can't see it here, but there is some very fine creasing on the back black section on the back cover. That's going to ultimately be the grade limiting defect, I think. And I think because of that, it'll come in a 7. But I think it'll come in much higher than that 4.0 uh, that it was assigned. Uh, Heir to the Empire. I am a big Star Wars fan. And the next two of these both I got off of Instagram from Black Raven Comics. So Jeremy there gave me a little bit of a hookup, which I appreciate. I'm a huge Star Wars fan and I'm a very big fan of uh, Heir to the Empire. So I had my personal copy actually signed by Timothy Zahn at C2E2 uh, a couple of years ago. So you find it, The Force is Strong, Tim Zahn, which is awesome. Uh, that one has since been encapsulated and so I wanted a raw copy 
Um, and this one came in, it was supposed to be near mint minus, uh, which would be like a 9.2. And I think the biggest defect here is going to be that one spine tick. So we're going to see if I can hit, uh, you know, might have a very, very little bit of corner wear there. Um, we're actually going to see what CGC says about it. And I'll keep an eye out for a, a lower grade raw copy. So that one will be going. Uh, the next one here I also got from Black Raven and Jeremy. Uh, this comic, uh, you know, was clearly stated as being very low grade. Uh, this whole section is a blown staple and a spine split. Um, this top staple is still attached, which I, I did confirm both before buying and after. Um, and of course, there's a huge issue crease going right down here. So this thing is going to get absolutely destroyed grade wise. I'm thinking 3.5. That's kind of my gut. That's roughly in line with the pre-work grade, which I think was, uh, you know, good, good, uh, good, very good, which should have been three. I'm hoping for a three, five. We'll see how that comes out. Nevertheless, very uh, popular comic, very rare one, not one I had in the personal collection. And so one I was very excited to get. Um, normally for a book of this, you know, quality and grade, I would not encapsulate it. I'd just leave it in a top loader in my personal collection. But because this staple's blown and this one is not as firmly attached as I might like, um, I want to get this one encapsulated before that top staple pops and I have a fully detached cover. So this one's an encapsulation, not necessarily for the grade, but to kind of protect the comic long term. All right, Wolverine number 88, the first clash here between uh, Wolverine and Deadpool. This one I picked up at a local Comic Con for five bucks. It was hanging out in somebody's Wolverine bin. Uh, apparently nobody had gone through and snagged it yet, so I was happy to do so. Um, all in all, it looked like it was pretty good. The guy had it graded a VF. I think it'll come in a little bit closer to that 9092 range. Um, you know, there is a little bit of a binding tear down here, but again, that should not affect the grade too much. That is normal for a comic book manufactured. A couple of spine ticks, nothing too crazy though. So I got my fingers crossed for that one. This is hands down the most book or most unique comic in this collection. Um, this is the Amazing Spider-Man 300 Chromium variant. Um, but this comic is not a comic. It's only a cover. So I picked this up from Nostalgia Zone Comics in Minnesota. I had a separate unboxing from them. They're one of my favorite LCSs from when I used to live in Minnesota. I really love how this uh, chromium cover shines. It's not a foil. It has depth. It has lines. Um, and usually this is a very expensive book, but they had only the cover and it was a production proof cover because there are no staple holes. So it's not like it was used and detached. The cover itself is near mint. It just didn't have a comic book inside of it. So I'm going to send it to CGC so that they can encapsulate it, hopefully with the sticker CVR, just to indicate that it's only the cover. So hopefully it won't get graded. It'll just be noted, um, you know, uh, unused proof cover. And I'll be able to enjoy the beautiful cover art, uh, as you can see there, because, you know, it's not like I'm going to crack it open to read it anyway. All right, and the last one here is the Sandman number one. Now, this blew up with the Netflix series, and it has since cooled down quite a bit. I got this in a lot of comics from Heritage Auctions, and uh, it was rated VF at there, and I think this one I was able to clean and bump and press. It still won't be a 9.8. I'm hoping for that 9092 range um, to, to try to help get me, you know, kind of a nice book. So we'll see what ultimately CGC says about that, and, uh, and this will be the next 10 comic submissions. So stay tuned. It'll seem like mere seconds, but I assure you it'll be weeks, if not months, from my end. So fingers crossed. Don't forget to crush that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up and a like. All right, howdy folks. The moment of truth is upon us. So right here we have fresh back from CGC a box of 10 modern comics and it's about time to see how we do here. So I do have my notes as to what we submitted and so we can compare them to the preceding uh, grades or at least what they were given or purchased at and we'll see what kind of bump suite we got from these books. So let's see how we did. And in no particular order. We have a Amazing Spider-Man 252. So just as a reminder, so this comic was purchased from my comic shop in a very good 4.5 grade. And the grade returned by the CGC grader is an 8.5. So that is a pretty big bump. Now the major defect listed by my comic shop was water damage on this book. And so I do not think it had been previously cleaned and pressed. And so, you know, by being able to you know, iron out that water damage and use some of the light uh, surface buffing techniques here. We were able to take this from a 4.5 all the way up to an 8.5, very fine plus comic. Um, this is probably one of, 
you know, the most popular Spider-Man comics of the last 30 or 40 years. Um, epic first appearance of the black suit in the title of The Amazing Spider-Man, so I know he first appeared in Secret Wars 8. Uh, clear homage to Amazing Fantasy 15, and uh, just pretty awesome. And there's a little piece of cardboard fuzz here that thankfully is not on the inside of the case, um, but very awesome. Very happy to have that one back. 8.5 is a little bit better than I would have thought it would have come out at. So next up is... Uh, New Teen Titans Annual number two. This one was previously a CGC 9.2 book, and I was um, skeptical of that grade, and I really thought it should be higher. I personally think that this book should be a 9.8. Um, I don't see anything wrong with it, to be honest, other than the small binding tears on the top and the bottom. Uh, it came back at 9.4, so I did get a bump. Uh, not the bump I was looking for, Certainly not worth uh, the, the time and effort to bump this one from a 9.2 to a 9.4. So that one's pretty disappointing, but I guess you take what you can get and hopefully it all evens out in the positive direction. All right, next up is a Uncanny X-Men 3.5. So this one was purchased from Black Raven Comics on Instagram. Jeremy there, um, you know, advertised as low grade. I think it was advertised as good, very good. And after Clean and Press, it got a very good minus 3.5 grade. Again, this one had a lot of structural damage, so we were expecting a very low grade copy here. If you see that spine split and the staple pop, and it has a pretty gnarly issue crease right down the front cover there that you can especially see kind of on the top. Um, right here through the M and X-Men. All right, there's a good view. So unsurprisingly, this one came in at a low grade. I think 3.5 was my guess, so I personally am quite happy with that. Uh, you know, I didn't have a copy of this in the PC, and this is a nice affordable one to uh, have as a placeholder, which I will absolutely take. Um, and so I'm personally excited and happy with that outcome. Next up here is a Sandman number one. This one uh, was purchased from Heritage Auctions at a grade VF 8.0. Uh, after a clean and a press, CGC awarded it a 9.2, which would be a near mint minus grade. Personally very happy with that. Another one that I did not have in the PC and the price was right on this auction that was purchased as a lot. Um, yeah, so now I can go ahead and sleep with the Endless in the Dreaming. So I'll take that, um, very cool. Hopefully the next one up on the Netflix series is also good. Next book up here is a cover. Uh, this one is advertised as CVR. Amazingly, that cover has white pages, so I don't know why they put white pages on there. Um, this one we knew was the cover only. It does get the, the notation CVR cover only, um, you know, but still an, a very cool from arm's length chromium cover. Uh, unpunched, no staple holes, so it's not like it was a detached or ripped cover. It's a, it's a near mint production copy. Um, very, very nice looking. Um, I, I don't know, I, I really dig the chromium. I think it's part of being a 90s kid, everything is chromium, and who doesn't love that? So that one was as expected, being a chromium cover, so nothing too crazy there. This one, oh my god. All right, this one. <laughs> this one was a CGC 8.5 copy of Uncanny X-Men number 266. It has been returned a 9.8, 9.8. Um, in my opinion, this comic should not be a 9.8, but it looks like I did a heck of a job covering up the little tear in the creasing that was over here with that iron and press. Um, yeah, uh, you can kind of see it down here. There's definitely some damage. Eh, it's not showing up on the camera. You'll have to take my word for it. Uh, I'm personally befuddled by this 9.8 grade, but that is undoubtedly what was returned by CGC. And I'll take it. I don't have a 9.8 of this one in the collection. Now I'll have to make a difficult choice whether to keep this 9.8 um, or that 9.6 newsstand that I have. So that'll be a tough personal choice, but <laughs> this is probably going to be the winner of the box. 8.5 to 9.8. So that one, that was pretty good. I should have taken pictures of the before and after that, which I did not do. All right, uh, up here next is Star Wars Heir to the Empire number one. First appearance of Mara Jade and Tim Zahn, or, sorry, uh, Admiral Thrawn. T classic Tim Zahn story. I was lucky enough to have Tim Zahn sign my, my personal copy of this one uh, at a C2E2 a couple years ago. He signed it, The Force is Strong, Tim Zahn, and I was super excited about that. Um, this one was advertised as Near Mint Minus 
from uh, Black Raven Comics on Instagram. So Jeremy nailed that one on the head. He actually nailed, you know, pretty much both of them. I think that X-Men one was pretty solid. So, you know, both of those came back as advertised. I was hoping this one might get a little bit of a bump from, from the work, but whatever, I'll take a 9-2. Um, it's a good week to unbox a slabbed Heir to the Empire number one. So I'm um, very much so looking forward to the TV show. All right, next up here, we've got a Wolverine number 88. This one was purchased at a local show for a mere $5 a couple of months ago. Um, and uh, it was advertised as VF Plus. So I was able to bump that up to a CGC 9.4. I'll take that all day long. Um, this one was another one I didn't have in the collection. And I can't say $5 was not the right price because it absolutely was. So that was a really good one there to pick up. Uh, Deadpool, very much so looking forward to Deadpool number three. We'll see if CGC ever actually returns my Hugh Jackman signing. It's probably lost into a black hole of the signature series maybe by 2024. Maybe they're waiting for the movie premiere. I don't know. I've had that book for like six months. All right, anyway. Next up here is The Eternals number one. This one was purchased from my comic shop as a fine VF 7.0 copy. I was uh, unable to find the sticker for it. Uh, CGC has returned it in 8.5 grade, so a nice bump up there from a 7.5, or from a 7 to an 8.5. Um, don't know what held it back a little bit. Um, I was kind of hoping this one would hit a nine. I don't think I saw anything that would, I mean, it's got a few spine ticks. Yeah, we'll see. I might hold off on this one and resubmit this one and just see if it gets dinged again, or maybe I'll have to go over it here with a microscope and see if I can figure out what was up. But um, definitely uh, above the 7.0. So happy with that overall. And the last one here of the evening, is an Omega Man number three. This one, CGC is returned in 8.5 grade and it was purchased as a My Comic Shop fine copy. So right there's the tag, read it. Uh, it was purchased as a fine 6.0 copy. It had some foxing on it I cleared off um, and it definitely is not a 9.8. So I think I called that out. I think 8.5 is about right. It has a little bit of a corner crease there. It's got a few spine ticks. Um, it's got rounding on the corner down here. Um, and what might be either a very little bit of residual foxing or some standing on the back cover. So I think this 8.5 is pretty fair. Um, and it's another one I didn't have. So, um, yeah, happy to add that in there. I don't know if we'll see Lobo up here. He's definitely not one of my favorite DC characters, but maybe uh, James Gunn will do a good job introducing him at some point. So all in all, that's my 10 comic modern submission. As expected, uh, probably about right. I would have to go back and re-examine it. Um, that one I'm okay with. The 9.4 here I think is pretty pretty spot on. You know, this one was as advertised. I think I was taking a little bit, but when you're in that 9.0, 9.2, 9.4 range, it's kind of a dice roll. I, you know, I think those grades are all roughly the same. So 9.2 versus 9.4, whatever, I'll take that all day. Um, let's see here. What else we got? Recap cover. That's as expected. Um, Sandman was a bump from an 8 to a 9.2. So that one will take really good. This one was advertised 3 and it came back 3.5. So I can't be happy with that. I think this is one of the two winners of the box. So this one was My Comic Shop 4.5 able to bump that up here to a CGC 8.5. That's a pretty big bump ski. Just again, so you don't think I'm totally crazy. Where did I put that label down? Uh, right here, I think it is. So, you know, I've got, I've, I keep these stickers just to make sure I'm not crazy and I can view them in, in the My Comic Shop portal. And I don't go through enough books for them to mix them up. So um, this one is for sure in a way the dud of the night. I thought that this thing should have bumped a little bit more than that. <laughs> and this, uh, makes me smile. So the best part about this is I received this as a thank you gift from a client for their bump skis and I was able to give their thank you gift one heck of a bump ski. So um, thank you to that individual, genuinely appreciated and I still cannot believe this thing made a 9.8. So that new stand 9.6 is by far and away the nicer book but Oh, well, I don't set the grades. Oh, and by the way, for anybody who's keeping track or wants to reach out and ask me what I think about grades, I, why ask me? I mean, I'm going to tell you it's up to CGC. And I think these two, you know, this one I would call a 9.8 all day. This one I would call a 9092 maybe, you know, so I don't set the grades. CGC does, and I try to tell people that. Um, other than that, you know, that's my unboxing. So take care. Um, please go ahead and leave some thumbs up for me. Uh, click that subscribe button right down below and I'll catch you in the